Just in case it wasn't obvious, any character that my house had in the past, I mean check out these old listing photos from 2009 I found, was torn out and ruined when the house was tenanted and smoked in for 10 years. The house was basically a teardown to be honest, which is why we had to gut the entire thing and start from scratch. With that being said, we still have a lot of work to do if we want to bring back any character at all to this blank slate, and I kind of wanted to start with the walls in my primary bedroom. The first thing that's not giving anything is this bed sheet that I've been using as a curtain for far too long. We tried to save any money where we could, so we did all the painting in the house ourselves, which means you guessed it, another room without painted trim. Seriously, I feel like the day we move out of this house will be the day the last piece of trim gets painted. End of day one, painted all this trim, the trim around this door, We've got this trim painted and then all the trim painted over here. And then, oh yeah, around the door. But Hotch, tell them that mom is had enough for the day. So we'll paint the other trim another day, right? So if you haven't been here before, I love white spaces that are filled up with colorful accents and golds and plants. And I especially love this molding. So for today's video, that's kind of where this makeover begins. I think I just like know how to do this, but I'm gonna start with tape to figure out like where I want the squares and then figure out how much material I'm gonna need. Um, so I'm gonna start with this wall. Do you like my bracelets? This isn't a DIY where I can tell you exactly how to do it because our spaces are inevitably going to be quite different, but I can talk you through the process my brain went through to get to where I got. The first thing to take into consideration is the width of your crown molding. Inevitably, that's gonna take up some of your wall space. The rectangles on each of your walls are gonna be different sizes. It depends on how much space you have to work with. I knew on this wall I wanted there to be two of them, so I measured the entire wall and I took that number, divided it in half, and that's how I kind of came up with my measurement. Keeping in mind that I want about five inches between everything, so between each rectangle, between the rectangles and the crown molding. I highly suggest that you plan this out on paper before you actually go to cutting because this is the hardest part. It's quite tedious, but when you know your measurements beforehand, it makes the cutting a lot easier. Once I knew my measurements, I took a big piece of wood and a pencil and I basically drew my lines on the wall exactly where my measurements were. This is what made it so easy for me later in the video to attach my cuts super quickly. So with those measurements in mind, I headed to Home Depot where you guys saw my utter friggin' shock when I realized just how expensive an eight feet piece of crown molding was. So my cheap ass opted for the $49 regular molding value pack. We found the value pack. I think you get seven or 10 of these. I can't remember the number for $45. The reason why this is going, I think look okay is because my ceilings aren't 12 feet, huge ceilings. And also this is a thick, molding on the top and a very thin on the bottom so i think it's going to give that crown molding effect i think that looks great so this is cut on a 45 degree angle and so is that and that's going to allow me to put the pieces in so they're sitting seamlessly oh my gosh i'm so excited it's one piece of crown molding and i have a million more to go but The audacity of the little molding also being $19 for an eight foot piece, absolutely not. I ended up ripping down my value pack molding on a table saw. It looks so good. When did the DIY life become so unaffordable? Okay, we got one side of the bedroom done. It's not painted or anything, but it looks so good. I feel like it makes it look more expensive, but yeah, I still have to do this side. I actually love this. This is one of my favorite DIYs you've done. Okay. 
so I'm ready to fill these holes. You can see that there's like lines where everything connects. We're gonna fill this and then go along and fill all of these holes. Also going to caulk the edges as well. This is gonna be quite the task. The secret to filling these little lines is to not use caulking, it's to use some spackling. The contractor that worked on our house told me that. But there's kind of like a before, let me show you an after. So there is it done with spackling and it looks so good. If you use caulking on these lines, it's literally just not gonna work. Mm -hmm. I only use caulking to go around the squares and fill in like the lines right here. Somebody watching this is gonna be really upset that I didn't paint this some beautiful accent color, but let me live my life. I am so scared of commitment to paint colors. That's why I decorate with color, because I can change my mind. I feel like one day I can see myself painting this room a color, but for now, I'm just gonna live in my scaredy cat world. Okay, okay. The bedroom still has a long way to go, but this took me weeks, you guys. I, 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 I can't even lie, it was one of the hardest DIYs I've done but also one of the most rewarding because I think it looks incredible. We still need a million things, like we need a light fixture. These curtains over here are just not doing it for me. We need some like statement or colorful curtains, some pillows, we need some styling. So if you wanna see this room come together, stay tuned. We're gonna do an entire decorating of this space. Thank you for watching. I'm so glad that this is done and I can finally move on. See you guys in the next video. Bye.